the whack video you had created, and he was just like, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I'm not wasting my time. Ah, no. No. No, black child. That's what it was. He saw that video, and you don't hop to his thing. <sighs> Give me your phone. I want your phone, I want your iPads, I want your tablets, I want your Kindle readers, I would like your Kindle Fire, I would like your iPod, I want everything that you can access the internet with. I would like your Apple Watch. Give me all of it. You've been banned from the internet for two years. Don't come back on the internet no more. Two years. Yeah, I put this on the page. So, the Dominique man from Texas proposed to his wife, and three days later they found a dead. Now, it's alleged from eyewitnesses that some kind of altercation happened. He pulled out a gun. She was like, Shoot me, shoot me. And he shot her. Now, you don't antagonize nobody with no gun. You don't be saying, shoot me, shoot me. If they already mad enough to have a gun, not saying it was her fault. Don't get me wrong. But if they already mad enough to have a gun pulled out on you, my last words would be praying, not antagonizing somebody. <sighs> but how you propose to somebody and then, and then shoot them? I was trying to read the article to see, did she say no? But I guess she said yes, because they kept referring to her as his fiance. So... I guess she said yes. Oh, child. And bless her heart, she had three kids, 11, 6, and 4. And he done killed the lady. Rest in peace, mamas. Rest in peace. And I was trying to also figure out how long did she know him? I don't know why that was such a factor to me. But I really wanted to know how long did she know him because... I know you can know somebody 30 years, 12 years, 11 years, and not true, and only see what they allow you to see. That's the thing. I hate when people be like, oh, well, they divorced it because she ain't know him long enough. He ain't know her long enough. They ain't known each other five years yet, and they married already. That's why they divorcing. That don't matter. Because no matter who the person is, they're only going to let you see what they allow you to see. I don't see that's not I was trying to read the article to find more details as far as what took place for him to be so angry that he sh shoots the women that he just proposed to. Crazy. <sighs> what else? Um This is so stupid. This is so stupid. Did y'all see the article where the pastor is letting his wife go with this? rich man because he offering two thousand dollars the man is in italy you have to pay for the plane ticket to get to him out of the two thousand dollars that he gives you so he really ain't giving you two thousand dollars and my thing is, how you put a price tag on your wife and then the husband of the wife is the one that gets the money. She's going with the man and all of his friends, according to the article, but the husband is the one that gets the money. What's left out of the plane ticket to Italy? Because Italy is not cheap. But what I'm trying to figure out is a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so the, the article states that he's going to take the lady, well, his friends are going to take the lady out. They're going to go out to eat. It's going to be breakfast in bed. Um, they're going to go canoeing and, you know, all kind of stuff. And I'm sitting here like, but this is with multiple people. It's with his friends. And the husband is allowed to come to Italy as well. So now that's not one plane ticket. That's two plane tickets. And the only thing you got is $2,000. That is so stupid. And then the husband get to keep that. So the wife... The wife must not be happy with her husband. Because... Who signs up for that? That is, that is so stupid. Who signs up for that? I'm going to go to Italy and be with this man and all his random friends who I don't know anything about. I'm going to be with them going on dates. They're going to fix me breakfast in bed. Um, we're going to, you know, 
do all these activities together. That makes zero sense to me. And it was a bunch of people that was actually trying to sign up for it. But he picked this lady. And they okay with it. So, I mean, you know, if that's what they want to do, I'm child. I, mm. And she got to spend a week with the man. A week with the man and his friends. That's like you get paid $2,000 for an orgy with random people. And it's only $2,000. Girl, please. Please. Um... I also saw this article about this man. He had posted it. He had posted on Facebook. He was complaining like because the girl he went on a date with, she ordered a thirty-one dollar margarita, and um, like uh, entree or something for thirty-two dollars, something else. And he was like, "You don't order that. You went. You went order that stuff on a regular day, unless it was your birthday. So why would you order it on this date?" He was hot. He made a whole Facebook post about that thing, everything. But my thing is this. When I've been on dates before, I've never um, been told a limit. And me, I'm kind of considerate. So I asked. I'd be like, okay, well, is a, I mean, what, what do you think I should get? I say something like that. Oh, get whatever you want. Cool. Cool. So... I, <laughs> Maybe it was just the, the type of man she went on a date with. And another thing, I think now um, a lot of men are getting too comfortable with social media. And a lot of them are like just vending on social media and posting. And and it's a lot. It's a whole lot. And so if she was going on a date with this man, she probably, uh, even if she did meet him online. My thing is, if somebody write me online... Um, be it Facebook or any, I like Facebook because it physically lets me get to know a person. I think more so than an Instagram because that's just pictures. So if somebody write me something on Facebook, I automatically go look at their page. I'm looking at it like, okay, what they be talking about? What they be talking about? What they be talking about? If I see them like going down their timeline, if I see them uh, dissing somebody else or talking bad about their baby mama or something like that. For me, it's a complete turn off. Like, if you if you running them down on, on here, what you gonna do to me? So, I don't play that. So, I think when going on a date with somebody, especially if you meet them online, then I think you should do your research before you go on that date. Just just so you don't waste your time. You know, time is precious, girl. You better research because you could have said that a long time ago. Because if he did that with you and made that post about you, I'm pretty sure he made posts about other people in the past. So you would have knew what you were getting into before you actually got to the place. Um, Y'all must have been at the sugar factory. $31 margarita. Y'all had to be. Girl. But... Nevertheless, I feel like if you're going on a first date and the person asked you on a date um, and they chose a restaurant that even offered a $31 margarita, then there's a chance that I'm going to order it. You can't be mad. You should have took me somewhere that was within your budget. So, mm, I think I'm kind of torn in the middle on this one because I really feel like you, he should have took her somewhere that was within his budget. And the restaurant that he took her to for the, that restaurant to order to even offer a $31 margarita, it probably was a more upscale type restaurant, I would say. Um, he should have took her to La, La Cindo, Recindo or something where she can get a whole bunch of margaritas for real cheap. Like a Spanish restaurant. La Tumbo. Something. Some kind of Spanish restaurant. So she can get her a lot of margaritas for real cheap. Get her a little chicken fajita. You know, something like that. Real cheap. Be able to came up real lovely. So you want to showboat and take her somewhere expensive. Then don't get mad when she orders something expensive. That's all I'm saying. Um. Da 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 da. Y'all, I think we done covered it and ran through it. Okay, so we done went through the form, baby. So let me just let me just ask y'all this. 
This is a question that when y'all watch the playback, I really want y'all to answer. Okay, so every time I tell somebody what I do, they always be like, oh, you got it easy. You got a sit down job. It's easy. Da -da -da -da. Do y'all really think working at a call center is easy? I feel like the people who really think it's super easy are the people who've never worked in a call center before. I put my hand, like, I would put this hand up before God and say what I'm about to say. I've seen people leave crying because they couldn't handle it. Uh, it's people who have came in and not returned the next day because they couldn't handle it. It's like, people don't understand the mental strain it puts on you. Um, I had my first, like, anxiety attack from working on a call center. Um, the thing about it is, well, the thing I feel like for a lot of people is that stresses them out so emotionally. Um, and I noticed from talking to different people about it, a lot of people are not built to handle emotions that are mental. They're more equipped to handle physical stuff like a plant job or something like that. You have to be a different kind of tough to handle emotional stress and when you have a customer on the phone yelling cursing screaming uh belittling you and you know you can't do the same back in return then it's hard it's really 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 trying and that frustrates you because you sitting on the phone getting chewed out but as long as they don't curse you're not supposed to disconnect the call. So I feel like the most part, that's why so many people are agitated and, and, and frustrated by it. And that's why a lot of people don't return because they're like, oh, no, I'm not going to be on the phone with them talking to me like that. No, they don't come back. I, I don't think people that have not been in that experience before personally understand that they just think oh you sit down all day you call a few people that's all you have to do that's an easy job but i just wish it was a way that they can actually get the spirit the experience for like a week and i think the tune will change dramatically because you don't know what it's like i think until you get inside because you think it's easy going in until you actually get in you know, and once you get in and you have a chance to experience it for yourself, it's totally different. But I always get that, oh, you got an easy job. You get, you think so? Physically, <clears throat> yes. Emotionally, no. I didn't even know I have panic attacks. <clears throat> I should have got some water. I didn't even know I have panic attacks until working there. Um, I had to leave work one day because I was about to have another one. Uh, so at this point we're at two. So I actually had to leave work one day cause I felt it coming and I was like, I gotta go. And I left. Um, it's better now, but the anxiety level, at, cause I've been there three years, but at the, the anxiety level that I did have was like terrible. I just thank God now for growth and that I can handle it better. Um, as far as keeping my composure. So, yeah. Um, well, that is about... I do have a question. Was the baby not allowed to talk to his lawyer? Because why did he tell the lawyer that he had um 50,000 in his hotel why did he tell the judge that he had 50,000 in his hotel room that he needed his lawyer to go get was he just putting it on public record so the lawyer can steal any or oh he probably was doing that because that that would have been real smart because if he had just told the lawyer the lawyer could have said that he didn't tell him and he went and stole the money and who would have known his word against his right Okay, baby. Maybe I understand. Let me also explain. Let's talk about Love and Hip Hop. Uh, what is this? Hollywood. Okay, so. I feel like that 
Jonathan is securing his spot. Um, a lot of people like they don't like Jonathan. Jonathan's messy. So I feel like if you look at the other reunions, Jonathan wasn't on the couch that much at all. So I feel like Jonathan is using this season to secure his spot. Because if you think of all the stories, there's all the drama feel between Yandy and Chrissy. Oh, what do you know? Jonathan's in the middle. Um, Kim Bella, Yandy. What do you know? Jonathan's in the middle. Tahiri. Erica. What do you know? Jonathan's in the middle. You have to... When when I watch stuff like that, I kind of think outside the box from like a normal person. I feel like Jonathan is... He know what he's doing. So, pretty much, he, he's not going to be a side couch cast member this reunion. He's going to be on the main couch. Like, one of the other main members may have to get up and let Jonathan sit there. Because Jonathan is involved in all of these storylines this season. All of them. Purposely. I see you, Jonathan. Checkmate. Uh, Remy and Papoose, Black Love. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, DC is coming home. Okay, then. Uh, what else? Chrissy Lumpkin. Can you please not be so mean and mad and bitter and aggressive? Because at some point you get too old for all it. We understand that you are a person who don't take mess off nobody and don't take junk off nobody. And I respect you for that. But at some point, Miss Lumpkin, you are too old to be go doing all that arguing and threatening people and wanting to fight. You have to understand at some point, you can't always physically fight to get your point across. Now, I do understand in some situations when you're tired of talking, there's nothing left but physical. I understand that. I don't condone violence, but what I will say, if somebody keep nitpicking with you and poking with you and just being messy for no reason, at some point, every bear gets tired of being poked. I understand that. But Chrissy, you just always on 10 when it comes to Yandy. Like, you can't be letting her steal your joy like that. That's what, that's what I don't like. If you say you're so grown, all of this, all of that, why you always let her steal your joy like that? If you happy when you come in a room, it does not matter if Yandy's there or not. You need to keep your same energy you had when you came in. Because if that energy was truly real and truly genuine, then you shouldn't let you shouldn't not you should not ever give Yandy the power to affect, change, or alter your mood. And it seems like every clip you in with Yandy, you allow her to alter, affect, and change your mood. That means she has entirely too much power over you. Pray on that. Work on that. Move on. Done. Um, Kimbella, if you was going to come back on the show to be uh, Chrissy's yes man and lap dog, you should have stayed where you was. I don't even have much for you right now because you hadn't did much. Boop. Move right along. Real hot spice of Atlanta. Um... I was so happy to see Nene make up with uh, Eva. I'm glad Kenya was not there because that would not have happened because y'all know Kenya be blocking the girls from making up with Nene. And I honestly think that's because she feels threatened by Nene. She knows that Nene uh, holds the queen title of Real Housewives of Atlanta for a reason. She is an OG. And I honestly think for that very reason, Kenya is threatening, threatened and she wants to knock Nene off of her throne. Um, I think the thing is, she know that she can't do it alone, so she want the other lady standing with her. So when Nene does do something to try to move a step forward, 
the king tries to come and tear down whatever olive branch Mimi has built. She tries to cut it down. So, I used to like Kenya a lot. But I feel like a veil has been pulled over my eyes when it comes to her. Because this season, I see the messiness. I see the manipulativeness. I see how she plays on other people um, to make them think that Nini is this type of person. Because that's how she feels. And I'm not here for it. You you. You cannot make people not like a person based off of how you feel about that person. Because everybody has their own experiences with people. And just because you might have had a negative experience with somebody does not mean the next person will have a negative experience with that person. That's why I don't like to tell people anything about people i like to let them get to know the person for themselves and then once they come and tell me oh you know what such and such i know why didn't you tell me because i like for people to have their own experiences that's just me i don't ever want to cloud somebody's judgment on somebody based off of my experience with them because it could have just been that our energies didn't match you know if that happens in life you move on uh, but Kenya definitely does not want anybody energy to match with Nene. She does whatever she can to separate all the girls from Nene. And I just hope the other girls, um, including Cynthia, will be able to see that Kenya is all for Kenya. And she will do anything she can so that she will have a relevant storyline. They need to bring back Sheree because she always put her in her place. At this point, Kim's on yet because she always put her in her place as well. But nobody did it better than, better than Phaedra. Y'all already know how I feel about Phaedra. But at this point, Phaedra Parks, we almost need you to return. Because one thing about it, could nobody get Kenya up on the Kenya skin like you could. And if you came back and you and Nene was a dynamic duo against Kenya, oh, that's some good TV. That's some good TV. Uh, let's see. Cynthia, I think you too, you are too passive when it comes to your friends. Um, I do think that you allow them to get away with too much just because they're your friends. But a true friendship can stand withstand a checking. If somebody does something wrong, a true friendship can withstand a checking. So I think there's oftentimes where you need to check and correct Kenya Moore for how she speaks with to you. Um you did check and correct Nene. That's why you guys are at odds now. Finally, you checked and corrected. That's why you're at odds now. Uh, Nene, I do think when somebody's your friend, you expect them to agree with everything you say. You expect them to be friends with who you're friends with. And if not, then you have no more use for them. You're hurt. You're the victim. Uh, all of that. You said it yourself. You don't think that people should be hanging around with people. And in a, in a sense, I can understand. Um, because your friends are supposed to love, cherish, and care for you. And if they are hanging around somebody who has done malicious things to you, socializing, fraternizing with somebody who has did multiple malicious things to you, then how much do they really love you? That's one sense. But then, like I said before... They may have did it to you, but if they have not did it to them, then they're not experiencing the same experience from that person that you are. So, in that case, that, that just may be it. They're not experiencing the same thing that you are. But, Nini, everybody around you at some point, it seems, has fell out with you. You and Candy, you and Cynthia, you and Eva, you and Marlo, you and Kim Zosiak. You and Portia. You and Phaedra. So at some point, the whole cast has been at, odd with, at odds with you. So at some point, I think Nene has to look at Nene and maybe reevaluate herself. And maybe that's what she's doing with this spiritual journey. She's reevaluating Nini because she's actually looking to see that she's the common denominator in all of this. Um 
And congratulations, Portia, on your engagement to Dennis. Uh, Eva. Eva. The Diva. Cover girl. Eva. Girl, let me ask you a question. Are you ever going to have a season where you ain't pregnant? I want to see you go out and do fun stuff with the girls and be able to do it and and not not and have to sit down because sit out because of your physical state. Is it ever going to be a season when you're not pregnant? God. I'm seriously You know, it was cute. First season, you came on pregnant. That was cute. Now you're pregnant again? Stay off that man. Just a little while. Stay off him a little while. Just so we can see you and your natural habitat. You know, drinking because you love to drink. From, from We see you, you love to drink. So, you know, enjoy your little cocktail or whatever. We want to see that evil turn up evil. We want to see her. We, we sick of pregnant evil. I feel like it should be like real moms of Atlanta or something. Because you always pregnant. Real pregnant ladies of Atlanta. You know. Some. Please. Take a break from having babies. I understand you want like five, six children. But can you please take a break so we can see evil without being pregnant? You know, I want to see your like unpregnant fashions. Like your no pregnant fashions. You know. Please, I still love you, Eva. You my, you one of my favorites, girl. I think you are my favorite. Yeah, but just just slow down on the babies. We want to see you not pregnant, girl. Slow down on the babies. Um, at this point, y'all know how I feel about Marlo. But at this point, Bravo. If y'all gonna keep bringing that women back as a friend of the show, y'all know I'm not a fan of Marlowe's. I've not been a fan of Marlowe's. But if y'all gonna keep bringing her back season after season as a friend of the show, at this point, she done been Nene friend to the show. Then when they fell out, she was Kenya Moore friend to the show. Then she went back to Nene friend of the show. So at this point, Maybe she needs a peach. Y'all y'all keep her on the show. I'm tired of her being a friend of the show. She go on all the trips with a lady. All the trips with the ladies. Everywhere they go, there's Marlo. Just give her her peach. And I know that I say that because you know I'm not a Marlo fan. But just give her her peach at this point. Gosh. Give her her peach. I think she needed more than Tanya at this point. Because she done been on there longer. She always at the events and traveling out of town and country and the state, our city. Anyway, give her her peach. Okay, she can have a, ple a peach. Can she have a plum? Maybe like plum, you know, because the other housewives, they, they got a bigger fruit. But then Marlo can be standing in the back with her plum. And then her tagline can be, I come with fashions. Just ask your man what the hell's happening. You know, some kind of headline about fashions because that's all she really talk about is fashions or something. Or somebody had to show these girls how to style. Leave it up to Marlo. This chick is wild. You know, some little headline, some real cute that has something to do involved with fashions. I think that's it, y'all. I think that concludes my first solo show. I had a ball and I enjoyed it. <laughs> so I will be having like guests on the show. Um, I kind of got some stuff in the works, some guests or whatever. Uh, it, I'm, maybe I do it like Madison, like rotating um, co-hosts. Because I think that'll be cute. Like we're rotating co-hosts. And we're going to go from there and see how that works. I think I like that. And then I'm going to let them pick their own topics. So, don't try to be getting at me. I'm going to let them pick their own topics. Whatever they want to talk about. 
I'm gonna let them have their own topics because I don't want to be in so much control as to where somebody's own, but they're not talking about things that are important to them. I would like for people to talk about stuff that's important to them, you know? Um, that way we can reach a, possibly reach a wider um, broadcast. And it'll be a little something for everybody. Um, I do plan on talking about all of everything on this show. I don't want it to be just um, marketed for one demographic. I want it to be a all-inclusive series. I want this to be a place where everybody can come and laugh and smile and have a good time. And maybe forget about your problems for the day for a while. And instead of thinking about your tea, I can feel y'all in on a little celebrity tea. <laughs> Okay, so thank you so much for watching. It's always, baby. I'm not exactly sure what time I'm going to be coming in and doing this or whatever. So tonight it was Wednesday. Next week it might be Tuesday. Um, we'll see. We'll see. It may be a good old Monday. Um, maybe Tuesday, though. We'll see. We'll see. But thank you guys so much for watching. I've seen the people coming in and out. Thank you guys so much for watching. That concludes it. I'm about to go cook. Because I have not. I ate one slice of pizza for lunch. And two chicken strips this morning. And that's it. I'm going to cook. Thank you all for watching. But I'm hungry. <laughs>